Hi students, it's Mrs. T, and this is the seventh lecture that you need to watch in week three. Um, this one I'm going to try to keep under 10 minutes. I've got to keep it under 15 minutes because I'm using screencastomatic.com and the free memberships um, require 15 minutes or under for the videos. So here goes. This video is about population pyramids. Let me move myself out of the way and I will be focusing more on the screen on the computer back here than on the camera where I can say hi to you and look you in the eyes. I'm going to look um, back here on the screen and I'm looking at examples of population pyramids. And so um, in the sixth video that you were watching for this week, you uh, learned some terms about population density and how we can use those things to compare um, levels of development, for instance, or um, amount of arable land in an area that we're going to study. Another uh, tool that we need in order to be able to understand demography and or and in order to be able to understand population dynamics and some of the um, charts and graphs that we're going to be looking at in these first few weeks together is something called a population pyramid. Now, not all of them are shaped like a pyramid, but I'm showing you some right here that, ha that do have that general shape. So a population pyramid is a chart that can be used to show the percentage of males and females uh, compared to each other per age group in a population. So males and females are always depicted on population pyramids. The youngest age group, which is always zero to four, is on the bottom. And the oldest age group, which doesn't always stop at 80 plus, but in this particular case, 80 plus is the general age group that is shown down here. So from the bottom up, you get older, and from the center out, you get, in this case, it's showing percent, uh, millions of people in the population rather than a percentage of people in the population. Um, you'll have to just look to see how that axis is labeled in order to know um, what that particular population pyramid is demonstrating. So I wanted to show you these with the bars because usually these bars um, are clearly delineated like this with white space between them so you can see the general age groups. I wanted to show you this first and we'll come back to this in just a second because um, we're going to look at comparisons, what these things can tell you over time. You might notice that this is a 40 year span from India in 1960 to India in, in the year 2000 and there's a different percentage of people you know, down here, the population is growing, in other words, and you can see the, the varied shape of the population down here with China's one child policy being instituted in between time from 1960 to, two, to 2020, or excuse me, to the year 2000, sorry, 20 years ago. Um, but first, let's look at, let me see, where is it? Um, yes, let's look at this uh, slide first. So, in general, there are four shapes that you should um, look for and interpret differently in population pyramids. So, in and, and you see how this says stage one, stage two, etc. These stages correspond to something that we're going to study at the beginning of week four, which is the demographic transition. We will be looking at agriculture, we'll be looking at population trends, the industrial revolution, urbanization, it's just so much. So we're going to wait till um, week four to cover that. But these population pyramids, it's going to be important for you to understand what they are really telling us, because it's more than just a couple of different colors on a page or the shape that it is. The shape that it is gives us some information about the kind of behaviors, the kind of growth, whether it, whether it is growth or whether it's shrinkage in a population. So if you see a population pyramid shaped like this, kind of an ice cream cone turned upside down, fatter at the bottom, very pointed at the top, that means a population is in, in a state of growth. Um, the population is growing. There are many, many, many children with fewer people, in this case, above the age of 65. So for some reason, people are dying at a, a fairly predictable rate and the lifespan is 
you know, the average lifespan is fairly low for people because you can see that immediately from the zero to four age group, which those age ranges are not depicted on these pictures. But just remember that, that the bottom is, is the young. And so under 15 is where they have this line here and the older you are is up at the top. So there's a whole lot of children, but something is happening by the time they're 15 for them to um, die and be killed or some move out or some kind of thing is happening. So this population is shrinking as the population ages. So there's fewer old people than there are young people. In this kind of shape, where it's pretty much an even isosceles triangle, I think that's not isosceles, that's a right triangle. This The entire thing, I think, is an isosceles, but this one is a right triangle, the half for males and the half for females. This is showing you um, pretty much a consistent expanding population. People are dying as they get older, yes, but they're dying at a decreased rate. Um, so this one is, is, we are seeing an expanding population with many more people living past the age of 65. And down here where you have really a population, um, it, the population is stabilized down here really. So it's stationary, we say in stage three, which we will talk about that again next week. We'll talk about the demographic transition model. But you see a declining birth rate, which means that these all of these adults are having fewer children than, the, than all of these adults were having up here. Look how wide this base is down here, comparative to fewer adults and definitely far fewer adults here. So these adults were having large numbers of children, still large numbers of children in the family. This shows a decline in the number of children per family family and more people are living into older age groups. So you don't see the 65 and 15 on this um, slide also, but but this, this line represents 65 and this line represents 15. So you can look to see how many people are in this, um, you know, this lower half of this uh, grouping between age 15 and 65. So smack dab in the middle there and below, these are the people who are having children. There's roughly as many people having children as they are, produ you know, as children who are produced. So every two people is having about every two, is having about two kids, essentially, is what this could be, um, you know, is what this could tell us. Now, in a contracting population pyramid, and even though these things are shaped like arches, um, this is still called a population pyramid. So in this contracting population pyramid, um, you see that even though you've got a large number of adults here, they're having fewer and fewer children. This was happening to the United States for a while. For a while there in, I believe, the late 1990s, early 2000s, couples who, uh, childbearing year couples, were having on average 1.3, 1.4 children per family. Where does the 0.4 come from? Well, it's a, it's a remainder after you divide. So if you've got a married couple here, a married couple here, a married couple, all these, all these people who are of child producing age and not all of them are having children or some of them are having one, some of them are having none, some of them are having three. You take all of those children added up to the number of people who are producing those children and you come up with 1.4, 1.6 children per family. And so when you have, if, if you've got a two parent household, which is still the norm in the United States, if you've got a two parent household or a one parent household, um, and you have fewer children in that household on average than the number of caregivers there are, the number of people producing those children, then you will see this shrinking base of the population pyramid. And it is when this base is shrinking that you can tell all kinds of issues that might happen with supporting an elderly population in a society. So in a society like the U.S. that has Social Security to ensure that these elderly folks above the 65 line are taken care of into their old age, really what we need is a huge population here in order to produce enough income to support these folks. 
And if these people who are going to be future wage earners, future income producers, um, are, do not outnumber these people, then we're going to have a, a big burden that these folks bear later on because there's going to be way more old folks. These people are going to be the old folks. These people are going to be the middle-aged people earning incomes and paying those taxes that are necessary in order to support the aging population with Medicare and Social Security. And I haven't even mentioned um, Medicaid and other uh, temporary assistance for needy families that are required in this age group. So taxpayers, essentially. Um, fewer taxpayers down here means harder times for these folks up here or nothing left for these folks down here by the time they get there. Okay, so there's a whole lot of information that we can get just like from comparing those population densities. There's a whole lot of information that you can get by comparing these um, these population pyramid shapes. It's always male and female along the bottom axis with males on the left and females on the right. And it's always age up through the top up through the top portion with the youngest on the bottom and the oldest on the top. And so this shape gives you a lot of information that you can look deeper into, like what is the crude birth rate? What is the death rate? Um, what is the natural rate of expansion? These kinds of things that um, you can find out about in week four. I'm going to post um, kind of a, a notes page for week four that gives you all of the different um, abbreviations for all these different birth and death rates that I've that I've mentioned very casually here with you, um, probably faster than you can take notes on. But uh, for now, what you need to know is how to interpret these. And next week, you will need to know better what all of the different acronyms or the abbreviations mean that go along with the different kind of birth or death rates that we're looking at, the growth rates that we're looking at. So. Um, so, okay, so this is population pyramids. Let me show you one more picture. There it is. So uh, here's some uh, cliffhanger for next week. We're gonna look at demographic transition. This says five stages, depending upon which uh, edition of the textbook you've got. Um, I think the 11th edition only recognizes four stages of demographic transition and the 12th edition recognizes five stages like this chart does. Um, Heads up, we're going to be looking at this fifth stage, which is or isn't, it's, it's debatable about whether anybody is in this fifth stage or not. Um, that's what we're going to be looking at for our first project in cultural geography class. That's 50 point project that um, we have for this semester. So our first one is going to look at this information and um, the population densities, population pyramids and that kind of stuff. You'll have to do a little bit of research on it yourself. Okay, so tune in next time for um, another installment. It'll be during week four that you see me again. So text me with questions. Bye.